So if you're new, this is going to be this is going to be something that is very different than what you've heard in the past. Um, but the question is, why do we actually lose our hair? Um, and this is going to get into, um, you know, I'm going to explain the topical solution, ARB, what makes that agent effective. But but it's really important for me to give you a backstory. And so you can understand for yourself um, the cause of hair loss and why we actually lose our hair. Um, and hair loss is a disease. Um, and I don't think a lot of people talk about this. Um, I think, you know, and, and I don't say this to scare you guys, and it's not bad news by any means. It's, it's a very, very easily preventable and, and, um, and you can restore this from, and, uh, or you can fix this even after, after you've had hair loss, but hair loss is absolutely a disease and it's a disease, um, of the hair follicle and a disease is nothing more than a disorder of structure or function in a human animal plant that produces specific signs or symptoms that affect a specific location. Okay. So that's key guys, a specific location and not the, the direct result of physical injury. Um, and a little bit more backstory. When I graduated um, college, I went to Michigan State and um, I graduated college and I started, I first worked for a company called Stryker, which is um, a big orthopedic company. Um, and then I left Stryker to work for Medtronic, which is the gold standard, um, really the, you know, thought of as the, the best medical device company truly in the world. And it's kind of like the the creme de la creme. It, it's, it's really, if you're a medical device, it's, it's the gold standard. It's what every company or it's what everybody who they want to work for, uh, because they make the best products. They're, they're, um, you know, they're very innovative and they're very, very well respected. And part of the reason why they're so respected is because they really do an excellent job of training their, their, their staff and employees. And I spent a year training before I went, you know, even into a surgery, uh, on my own. So I spent a year really diving deep into the technology and I used to sell, um, I was a clinical specialist, but um, I was responsible for pacemakers and implantable pacemakers and, and defibrillators. Uh, and those go in your heart. And um, I was inspired to work for Medtronic because my grandfather actually had um, atrial fibrillation and, um, and he needed a pacemaker. So my grandfather had a Medtronic pacemaker. And so I really got to learn a lot about the heart. And you're probably wondering what in the hell does the heart have to do with hair loss? But this is really important for you guys to understand. Um, and what the heart does is the heart is basically the body's pump that pumps blood flow through our entire body. And that's really all it does. Um, the heart is responsible for pumping blood through our body. Um, and then it also everything goes to the heart and from the heart. Um, in the right side of the, the heart, there's two sides. There's the right and the left side, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the left ventricle. But basically what happens is this, the blood circulates through your entire body to your heart, then to your lungs, back to the heart and out through the body. Um, and it goes to the lungs from the right, age, from the right ventricle and it goes to the lungs so it can get oxygenated. So as we breathe, um, our lungs, I mean, this is literally what happens as we breathe and we're breathing in oxygen that oxygen goes to our lungs and it gets absorbed by the blood and that blood then goes back to the heart and it gets pumped out from the, from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. So as, um, and as that process happens, that ox oxygen, rich blood goes through our entire body because every cell in our body needs oxygen. Um, and so guys, this is really critical and very foundational to, to understand. So over 96% of our entire body is made up of only four molecules um, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Um, and is that, I mean, it's kind of hard to believe, right? Like it, the, my, the body is just an, ins, it's an incredible machine. It's incredible. It's a living, I mean, it's an incredible machine. I have so much respect in it, like, um, and learning about the body and learning about the heart and learning about the electrical system. It's it just, it, it blows my mind how our body works, but oxygen, um, you know, like I said, 96% of our body is four molecules. Oxygen is the, is the, the most abundant in our body. And our body is literally made up of 60% or 65% oxygen. Um, and, you know, I really relate hair loss. I think it's a really good analogy to understand that hair loss is very similar to cardiovascular disease. Um, and again, this was my specialty, really focusing on heart, on the heart. And cardiovascular disease um, is, it's the number one cause of death in the United States. But what happens with cardiovascular disease, as um, you know, as that heart is pumping and beating, it, the heart is a muscle, 
and the heart require the heart muscle itself requires oxygen and the heart on the outside of it has arteries um, and these arteries are what actually give oxygen and nutrients to that muscle and you've heard of heart disease you've heard of you know cholesterol and things but as these arteries get clogged and get blocked it starts reducing blood supply to the heart muscle um, and when that happens you've heard of a heart attack a heart attack is the the, the technical name is the a myocardial infarction, but it, you know, AKA a heart attack. But what happens is that tissue that's been beating and working hard to, you know, to pump in that muscle that's working, it doesn't get the nutrients and oxygen that it needs and it dies. And that's what happens with a, with a heart attack. Okay. So this restriction, like I said, is the number one cause of death in the United States, 647,000 deaths per year. And that was last year uh, in the U S alone. Um, so it is very important guys, like blood flow is very, very important. And this has to do with, you know, this is really important for, um, you know, the foundation of adagen and why adagen is different and why adagen is so effective. So what in the hell does heart disease have to do with hair loss? Um, so like I've said many times, hair loss is simply a, is simply caused by a restriction of blood flow to the hair follicle. So what happens is you can see on the left, a healthy hair, healthy hair follicle. Um, when DHT attaches to the hair follicle, it, it attaches to the androgen receptor of the hair follicle. Um, and it starts cutting off that blood supply. And that blood supply is what carries the oxygen from the lungs, through the heart, to the hair. Um, it carries not only the oxygen, but all the nutrients that the hair follicle needs as well. Uh, all the vitamins and minerals in oxygen. Um, and just like heart disease, when that starts getting restricted, you start having um, you start having problems. And this doesn't happen overnight, just like heart disease doesn't happen overnight. It's a it's a progressive thing that happens. But your hair gets thinner and thinner and thinner until uh, eventually your hair follicle is so weak because it's so starved of nutrients and oxygen that it cannot produce a fiber of hair. Um, and this is also why um, you know, hair supplements, you know, and all these, you know, products of biotin that promote, you know, that just take this supplement that will fix your hair loss is total BS because you can take biotin and hair loss supplements, quote unquote, hair loss supplements by the mouthful and nutrients and excuse me, all these vitamins and minerals. But the problem is those vitamins and minerals are not getting to your hair follicle and a standard diet, even a standard American diet, which is very poor traditionally, um, has enough vitamins and, and, and minerals and nutrients for sufficient healthy hair. So it's not so much about your diet. Uh, I, I'm, I'm super a proponent of a healthy diet. Um, and that's the best thing you can do for your overall health. But as far as your hair, um, I do not think there's any particular diet that really helps with hair loss. And that's why. So this is what eventually led to the discovery of minoxidil um, by this guy here. Um, Dr. Khan, he was, um, he just passed away uh, in 2014, but, uh, he was the man that was responsible for, um, basically developing Rogaine and it, it was in Colorado and they were using Rogaine initially as a blood pressure medication because it's a vasodilator. And they started noticing, Hmm, there seems like, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's promoting hair growth. And the, the lady that they noticed it on, she, she never really had leg hair. She started taking minoxidil orally. Um, a high dose of minoxidil orally, which I've taken orally myself, um, and notice hair growth as a side effect. So they, the idea was, well, if blood flow restriction to the hair follicles, the problem, um, if we could create a topical solution that included minoxidil, and this goes back to the question about minoxidil um, that was posed earlier, the, the, the thought process was, well, heck, if we can just, you know, apply minoxidil to the, to the scalp, to the area where you're having hair loss, it would solve the problem and it helps. It can help, um, but I used 5% minoxidil and even 15% minoxidil um, topically, religiously, and I kept losing my hair. And the reason why, and this is what Rogaine is, Rogaine is off patent and all these companies that are selling topical solutions, they're all off patent, basically generic minoxidil that you can go get at Costco or CVS. But the problem is, is yes, it can help increase blood flow it can help it's a vasodilator so it helps increase blood flow but the problem with that is it does nothing to treat or or block or stop the actual cause of hair loss that is causing the restriction in the first place 
So the analogy that I give it is it's basically like if you're at a garden hose and somebody's kinking your hose, you know, you bend the hose over and you're blocking the water from coming through the hose. Minoxidil, rather than unkinking the hose, is like going over to the faucet to turn up the pressure to try to get more flow through the hose. But that is not, it might help a little bit, but it's certainly not an effective solution. And that's why um, I kept losing my hair. And that's why millions of people that use Rogaine and Minoxidil continue to lose their hair. And this then led to um, the, uh, there was a study that talked about eunuchs that have been castrated, males that have been castrated do not lose their hair. Um, and this led to the discovery and basically the understanding that, okay, well, this must be a hormonal issue and that uh, testosterone gets converted to DHT by this enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Um, and that that's the cause of hair loss. So if we can, if we can do, if we can, um, if we can stop this from happening, then uh, we can basically solve hair loss. And this is the invention of Propecia. Um, and the problem, the problem again. I took Propecia. I took which is finasteride. I've even taken off-label Dutasteride, which is a much stronger version, a much stronger DHT blocker. Um, and and all these DHT blockers are are technically, you know, they're known. The common lexicon is DHT blockers, but what they really are are five alpha reductase ductase inhibitors. Um, and those are trying to block the conversion from testosterone to DHT. And it is, it can help. Um, but the problem with this theory and this method is to, to reduce DHT, um, to reduce T DHT effectively enough to actually stop hair loss. One milligram of finasteride is nowhere near uh, nowhere near sufficient. You would have to take a much higher dose of finasteride, a much higher dose of dutasteride, and effectively, what you're doing is uh, castrating yourself, um, and you you would have to dramatically lower DHT much higher or much. You have to lower it much more than what happens with finasteride or dutasteride, and if you did so, the your side effects, which I had terrible side effects from finasteride and dutasteride, depression, chronic fatigue, brain fog were, were what was most common to me. I really didn't have any sexual dysfunction, thankfully. Um, but you can see there's a ton of issues with, with finasteride and any of these DHT blockers because DHT is a natural healthy hormone that our body needs. So, um, so it's not an effective solution. Um, so this gets to the point, and this is what we're going to discuss a little bit, is why is that just so effective and why is it different? Um, and like I mentioned earlier, follicular regeneration versus hair growth. So I think, you know, the kind of, um, you know, the epiphany and what I realized and what makes Adagen so effective is, you know, all these other technologies are trying to focus on how can we, how can we increase hair growth? How can we stimulate the hair follicle to grow hair? Um, and how can we, you know, basically stop hair loss? But the truth is, you know, really all, to be honest with you, adagen is really not that complicated or sophisticated. Um, and really the reason why it works so well um, is really all we're doing is allowing the body to function the, the way the body was designed to function. So we are not blocking DHT. We are not reducing DHT. And we are strictly focusing on the hair follicle health. Because if you can restore health to the hair follicle, that's all that you need to do. And the hair, the body is designed to produce hair. The hair follicles are designed. That's literally their job. They're designed to produce hair. So all you have to do is restore blood flow to the hair follicle. And that's why we're having such amazing results. And that's why um, Adagen is so effective. Um, so this is, you know, gets into a little bit about the ARB. People ask me, what is ARB? ARB just stands for androgen receptor blocker. Um, because this is the site where, you know, testosterone gets converted to DHT by that enzyme that Propecia and all these DHT blocks are trying to block. Um, and another note is, you know, once DHT has been converted from testosterone, um, these other, you know, there's a lot of people that have asked me about topical finasteride and topical DHT blockers. Once DHT is a, is um, been converted from, from testosterone by 5-alpha reductase, uh, finasteride and dutasteride, they, and again, these were, these were discoveries that were, they were stumbled upon because they were trying to reduce, um, enlarged prostate. So they, they noticed by reducing a large prostate, by reducing 5-alpha reductase, they saw some increase in, in, um, in the hair thickness. But once DHT is in the scalp, 
five alpha reductase inhibitors are not very effective. Um, so what ARB does, it's a fatty acid. Um, it's a combination of fatty acids uh, that basically bind to the hair follicle um, at the bottom bulb of the hair follicle, just where DHT would attach. But instead of allowing DHT to attach, it basically takes that place um, and it doesn't allow DHT to attach to that hair follicle. So we don't do anything. I'm very opposed to DHT blockers. Um, I could easily add finasteride to our topical solution if I believe that that was the answer. That is not the answer, in my opinion. Um, and that is why our topical solution and our shampoo are so effective is, and that's why it's, they're also extremely safe, is because they are not, we are not doing anything to, um, to block or inhibit your natural DHT hormones. Um, and, and I think the, the proof is in the pudding. Um, but so let's talk about, uh, so the, the topical solution is extremely important. Um, and it's, it's very like, it's also very important, the protocol. And that's why I think these live trainings, why, I, you know, I take my, take the time to really put a lot of effort and, and energy into creating these trainings because it's really important. I can give you the best, uh, you know, I can give you the best hair loss solution, which Adigen, uh, 100% in my opinion is. But if you don't follow the protocol properly, if you don't follow the routine consistently, you're not going to have the results. So let's do a deep dive into the topical solution um, and how to maximize the results. So the first thing um, that I want to make you guys aware of is the liquid solution. Um, the topical solution is, is nothing more than a delivery vehicle um, for the active ingredients that are in the solution. So the reason why it's in a solution and not a foam, like, you know, I get people asked that about the foam or, you know, why don't we just make a powder? The reason why it's in a, in a solution and there's a ton of research and testing and an insane amount of uh, money and research that's gone into making the solution as uh, absorbable to pass through the epidermis as possible because the epidermis is designed as a, as a protective barrier to keep topical solutions from penetrating the epidermis to get to the hair follicle. But so first of all, the solution is nothing more than a delivery vehicle. And I say that to say, so, you know, the more topical solution that you use, the higher, the higher amount of active ingredients that you're getting. So when Rogaine, which is, you know, minoxidil, now it's off patent is, you know, you can buy 5% minoxidil, generic minoxidil anywhere. But if you'll notice on all the packaging, it says apply one ML with dropper two times a day directly on the scalp and the hair loss area. Now, this is a, this is a very subtle thing, but this is really, really important um, because this is what Rogaine applied for. Um, at the when they were going through FDA approval in the 80s, they applied for one ml twice a day. Um, and in my opinion, one ml, um, and with a lot of experience and a lot of study, one ml is not enough for most people to cover their hair loss area. And one ml is also not enough dosage of the active ingredients, especially at a 5% um, level volume. Um, but this document, um, so again, this goes back to what they applied for in the 1980s. And this is every single thing that you see uh, for topical minoxidil will say one ml. And the reason why there hasn't been any changes in that, and we have to follow the same suit saying that one ml on our on our topical, you can you know apply one ml, um, is because Friday, July 7th, 1989, the FDA issued what's called a final action rule that basically says that no OTC drug, over-the-counter drug products that are subject to this final rule may be initially introduced or initially delivered for introduction unless they are subject to an approved drug application, an NDA. An NDA, also known as FDA approval, this is a an article uh, from Tufts, excuse me, Tufts University that said the average cost of drug for a new drug is $2.6 billion. Um, and I've seen it range from anywhere from two and a half to $3 billion, billion dollars, guys. Billion with a B. Um, so if I were to tell you on our label, Hey, you have to use, like, I recommend using two MLs or three MLs. We would literally have to file for an NDA, which is a new drug application, go through FDA approval, which would cost us 2.6 on average billion dollars and only the approval rate less than 12%. So this is a huge problem with innovation. This is a huge problem in the hair loss industry. And I don't think, and I'm not here to throw the FDA under the bus um, in their defense. I think they were trying to stop all the hair loss scams, 
that are still floating around the internet today that are people are being taken advantage of buying shampoos and all these products that promise hair loss or stopping hair loss, but they're, they're not following up. So I think the FDA was, was trying to do the right thing by instituting this. But the problem is, think of all the companies that we use today, Amazon, like here's Jeff Bezos getting started with Amazon in his, in his <laughs> room with the spray painted Amazon.com. Here's Steve Jobs in his garage, in his parents' garage starting Apple. Here's Zuckerberg uh, where he started Facebook. Um, you know, all these companies now that are billion dollar companies literally got started, you know, just with a great idea. They were passionate about solving a problem um, and they wanted to make a difference. But I can assure you that they didn't have a two point six billion dollar, um, you know, roadblock to innovation. Um, so that's that's really where we where we come in um, and what, why I'm really, really passionate about this. So, again, this isn't medical advice, I, but I want you to know, you know, when the topical solution, when you read the label, um, it says, you know, one ML, but one ML, um, in my personal opinion, and I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice. You have to talk to your doctor. Um, but in my personal experience, one ML is not enough to effectively cover the entire scalp. And it's also not a high enough percentage, especially at the 5% to, um, you know, that, that basically it's like the amount of ingredients that are going to the topical or that are going to the hair follicle. So, the order of a step. So I want to talk about the topical solution because I got a lot of questions about this. Um, the steps in order of of to increase the effectiveness. Like I had one guy send me a message. Hey, he's like, I've been using Adagen for seven months and I'm not really seeing great results. And I looked up and he's only ordered two bottles of topical solution. Now I'm not here to try to sell you and push you products, but if you want results, you have to follow the product, the process, the way that I tell you. And um, and two bottles stretching that over seven months, there's no, that's, that's not going to work. Um, and the first 90 days is extremely important to really reverse this process. And after you achieve your results um, and, and restore health to the hair follicle, you can maintain that with the shampoo and the brushing. Um, and you can really tone back on the topical. But at the beginning, you really need to use the topical um, to, to make sure that it, it, blocks and it inhibits DHT from attaching to the hair follicle and restores health to the hair follicle. So the first thing to do to increase the, the um, effectiveness of the topical solution would be to increase the amount of topical, which is basically just increasing the dosage. I normally recommend two to three mLs, milliliters, which is uh, what I use personally. And I think that's a really good dose to, to kind of, um, you know, cover the entire area. And I think that's a average dose that really works well for most people. Um, and not all people, if your hair loss isn't bad or, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need two or three mLs, but if you're, if you're looking to maximize, again, this is about maximizing the routine. This is about maximizing results. And if you're trying it and you're not seeing the results, these are the steps that you should take. The first steps that you should take to maximize, um, your results and get to get the best results. So step two would be to make sure that you're getting con uh, adequate contact time or increase your contact time. Um, so I recommend at least applying the topical solution at night before bed. So you have overnight uh, for that topical to really be absorbed in the epidermis and to get to the hair follicle. Um, the, the next thing you can do is you could apply the topical solution, um, you know, depending on when you shower, it doesn't matter when you shower or if you shower in the morning at night, when you apply the topical in the morning at night, the goal is to allow the topical solution to be on for the longest amount of contact time as possible. So if you shower at night, you could, um, you know, shower, and then apply the topical solution immediately after the shower, after you dry your hair and scalp. Or if you shower in the morning, you could apply the topical solution after your shower on dry hair and dry scalp in the morning. And by doing so, you would basically have topical on for the entire length of the day, which would increase your contact time, which would increase the absorption, therefore increasing your results. The third thing, the, fir the third step that you would do uh, to increase the results would be add the 10X roller. Um, and I recommend rolling every two to three days. Um, and that's what's in kit number two, the roller, the roller, um, you know, the, the solution with the retinol and the retin-A are designed specifically to help the absorption of the topical solution and drive the ARB, uh, through the epidermis to the hair follicle. Um, and that's what the roller does as well. The roller helps create micro porations, micro, um, punctures in the scalp that basically help the, uh, the permeation of the, the solution and the ingredients to the hair follicle. So that would be step number three to increase. Uh, the fourth thing that you could do to really increase results from the protocol and the routine is apply the topical twice a day. 
Um, you could apply it in the morning and then apply it again at night. Now, this isn't something that um, that I do personally. I apply it once a day, and I think once a day, if you're consistent, is sufficient. But if you're really trying to get serious and you really want to get after it, um, you can apply the topical solution twice per day. And basically, by doing so, again, it's all about the 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 amount of the dosage that you're using. Um, you can apply it in the morning, and then you can apply it at night. And by doing so, you'll be getting a double dose of the topical solution. Um, and then the last thing that I would do. Um, is you know basically if you do one two three and four the next step of um of increasing the effectiveness would be to increase the strength of the topple that you're using so you could go from the 5s to the 5 or from the 5 to the 15 and from the 15 to the 15x which isn't available right now but it will be available in three weeks um and so so guys this is really um you know I really talk about this because it's it's important for you guys to understand the backstory. It's, it's important for you guys to understand the science and understand, um, you know, it's really pretty simple and common sense of, of what the problem is. Um, but I think it's important to understand so you can um, so you can implement um, and and understand how you can control and have the best results for yourself. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's in depth. Um, how to you know basically increase your results and increase the efficiency of using the topical solution which is which is a big key to the to the adagen protocol